More shrieks and freaks of Halloween Town. This is your look at the Diamond Slack, the Nightmare Before Christmas, Small Vampire, and Helgami Collector's Action Figures. The residents of Halloween Town are the monsters and creatures who make Halloween possible, and they love nothing more than to frighten people year after year. But when Jack Skellington has an idea to take over Christmas, the four vampire brothers and the two witch sisters go along with his wild plan, and they do their best to recreate the holiday. This deluxe action figure of the small vampire and Helgamine from Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas come with an umbrella, a broom, and a piece of the Halloween Town guillotine. Collect all six parts from series seven and eight. Ready for more scares from the citizens of Halloween Town? I know I certainly am. Looking forward to having a look at these figures. But before we do that, of course, we're going to calculate just how tall they actually stand. I thought the little vampire, his tallest point would be his head. So I'm going to stop the tape measure right there. And while I am calculating out these numbers for you, I'd like to send out a big mad props. Thanks to the folks over at Diamond Select who provided the samples that we're having a look at in this review. Little Tiny Vampire isn't so little, actually, when you look at the calculations on my digital tape measure. He stands at 5.2 inches in height. And switching that to centimeters, he's standing 13.2 centimeters tall. Switching that now over back to inches. Get that all good and going. Let's have a look at Helgamine. I'm going to take that, of course, to the very top of her hat. It's not removable, just in case, FYI, you were wondering. And stopping it right to the very point of her hat. Right there. Fancy that. The point of her hat. Uh, the figure is 8 inches. A little bit taller, of course, than the smaller vampire. And then switching that over to centimeters, you're then looking at Helgamine standing 20.3 centimeters tall. And really, why not? Seeing as we've already had a look at him for some size comparisons, let's reach off camera and bring in Burnt Santa Jack. Quite considerably taller, yes, I know. He's a lot taller than the other two figures, but he is truthfully taller than both the characters in the film as well, so that makes perfect sense. Shall we discuss the diorama pieces that come included with the little vampire and Helgamine? I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, you do get two pieces, which unfortunately I have sad news to report. Can't really connect to the Jack Skellington that we already had a look at. If you remember, if you so recall, it wasn't too long ago actually, Jack, Santa Jack came included with this, the wall piece. Now, unfortunately, when you look at the brochure, and thank goodness these instructions are included for me to best illustrate to you guys. Here's the wall that we got included with Burnt Santa Jack, right? Yeah? Okay. This is the stairwell piece that came included with, well, either one of the figures that we're going to be looking at in a second. And then you also have this ring wall that's going to go behind right there. See? Right behind the guillotine. Um, unfortunately, though, it means, if you're looking at this correctly, I know I'm hopefully looking at this correctly, the wall face connects to a floor that we don't have yet. And then the stepway goes to the front of that. And then once you have this piece, this is pretty much the piece that's preventing us from putting everything together. Once you have this piece, then that back wall goes behind it. And then the guillotine slides very gently into those posts. And then you've got yourself the finished guillotine. As it stands right now, I can't really, unfortunately, do that because I'm missing this one crucial piece. And hopefully we'll be getting that soon. Even though technically I can't put everything together just now because we're waiting for that one crucial piece to arrive. We can still look at some of the detail work that they put into these pieces. Sometimes when you look at diorama pieces, one piece to a bigger puzzle, you sometimes overlook the amount of care that they actually put into each one of these pieces. And this brick wall, for example, is no exception. The color of plastic, as I could probably best describe, is probably like a gunmetal gray. See, it's quite a kind of a dark gray that they used. I'm not really sure why this had to have a little screw here as they could have just probably sculpted the whole thing, but I don't know. I mean, it probably makes some sense why it had to be there. But I mean, like both the pieces carry the same color scheme as we see with all the other Nightmare Before Christmas. It's really dark gray, as you can see right there. 
and then of course just dry brushing over top of it. It's simple, it's effective, it's the easiest way to pop details on sculpted pieces, and it does look good. I mean, you have to admit though, it will look a lot better once we have everything together and we have at least a fully finished guillotine to check out. Okay, okay, a little bit admittingly disappointed that I can't do anything with the guillotine just yet, but hopefully that will be fixed in upcoming videos. At least it can be said for both Helgamine and the Small Vampire that they do come included with accessories. Burnt Santa Jack didn't come with really much other than his display stand. First, we'll have a look at the little tiny umbrella for the little tiny vampire. I don't know if I would call that an umbrella. Would you call that a parasol? Do people even call these things parasols anymore? Is there a difference between an umbrella and a parasol? Somebody who is extensively knowledgeable on both the topics of umbrellas and parasols will let me know down below in the comment section. Most people probably just don't care. As you can see, there's a lone floating hand uh, attached to said umbrella, and that's going to attach actually to the vampire. What you're going to do is you're going to grab the vampire like this. You are want to be keeping, of course, very honed attention to the fact that he does have the thumb like this. That will sort of be the indicator to you as to which side this is going to go on. If you were to guess, say, this side, you'd be guessing incorrect, sir. Go sit in the corner. Actually, no, I, you don't sit in the corner. But it's this hand right here. Just going to unplug it like that. And now, of course, he's without a hand. What you're then going to do is going to go ahead and just attach the parasol. I'm going to go with parasol. I, I don't use parasol enough in everyday life. I've never struck, struck up a conversation with a stranger or people I know and uttered the terms parasol. So I'm going to use parasol for the rest of this. And as you can see, it just attaches it in his hand very easily, very simple. You don't have to worry that you're going to be fighting with pegs and these breaking off. They're very thick pegs, despite for the fact that he's got very small looking hands. And there's the parasol in the vampire's hand. Looks good. I'm probably going to be likely displaying it with the umbrella. All right, we'll jump back to umbrella. I think it just looks a lot nicer, and it makes him look a little bit more finished. Speaking of finished, what a nice finished looking little vampire that we've gotten here. He is small, but don't let the size fool you. There's a fair bit of detail actually that they put into even like his face, for example. You can see even like those little tiny fangers all done in a dark, almost mustard yellow. He's got a big open mouth, big, big smile on his face. Can't see any peepers on this particular vampire. They're gone. They're just absent. Instead, in favor of that, kind of more like a bluish silver that they used for the actual eyeballs right there and there. I don't know why I had to point out where those eyeballs are. You probably can see them. And they're outlined here in a more kind of an ice blue. Speaking of blue, as you can see, his skin is quite rather blue, both his hands and his face. And it definitely does look good. There's the back of it, just in case you're curious as to what it looks like on the back. I don't know why you would want to see the back of it, but it does have his high collar. He does have wings spread, as you can see, parts of his cape peaked in little points down below there. Uh, they're not too sharp, although I have to admit, just between you and me, don't tell anybody else. But when I was picking this guy up, I picked him up. I don't know why I picked him up like this, like I was trying to carry a small child. But I did run my fingers along the bottom, and ouch, I did notice there was a little bit of a prick to them. Uh, not something, of course, you really want to be super careful about, but I'm just pointing it out. I'm Oh, I see what I did there. I'm pointing it out. Uh, nice detail done to it, where if you look at it, it kind of does look a little bit like it's sculpted clay. Really, really interesting. I mean, sometimes, like, you overlook details done to surfaces on figures. It's only really when you stop for a second... Just admire the work that they actually put into this. I mean, like even the backs of the fins, the little little points that we just talked about before. There's like a fair bit of texturing done to them. That's really nice. On the underside of the vampire, I have to report there's nothing in there. It's just like a bullhorn, for example. Somebody could be yelling from the top of the mountain, Ricola! Anybody remember that commercial? But there's no feet, actually. It's just completely empty. You could turn it technically into a finger puppet, I suppose, if you wanted to. But... Uh, I mean, it doesn't really necessarily have to have feet. The fact that he doesn't even have feet, I mean, he serves fine the purpose of just being able to stand wherever you decide to put him for yourself. I don't feel the need that, I'm not disappointed that there's nothing underneath there, and that's perfectly fine for me. 
Articulation on this guy. His head rotates back and forth. It moves up. It moves down. There's no articulation to report, unfortunately, in his mouth. Wings. His arms, I suppose, if you want. Technically, count them as wings. Move back and forth. They move in and out. It's basically a little ball joint working behind the scenes inside there. And then he has articulation in the hands. That's the case on both sides as well. And then for, like I said, the underside, there's not a whole lot happening for the mini vampire. But still a decent looking figure when it's all said and done. As for Helgamine, she does come with her also her own accessory. She comes with a little broom. The broom itself doesn't really technically fit into her hand. Let me just show you what's going on here. Uh, she sort of has these little slivers for fingers. And you sort of just take the broom and rest it inside her thumb and her fingers. And of course, if you're resting it on the ground, like this, for example, I'm just using my psychic abilities to do this right now. I'm, no, I'm not actually just resting it on her dress. But that's enough just to keep it in place. She doesn't sort of grip it as much as she just sort of, I don't know, palms it, palms the broom. Uh, no, she can't ride it, obviously, because, well, she doesn't have feet either on the underside of her dress. And again, not disappointed at the fact that she doesn't have feet, because, again, you're only going to be looking at the figure like this. Who in their right mind is going to be looking at the figure like this? Sickos. That's what I would say. Sickos. As for the face sculpt, really happy with, again, how this one turned out. It does come across a little on the muddy side, but then I have to remind myself that Helgamine, as well as really the rest of the witches, all sort of have, like, muddy-looking complexions to them. She does have an open mouth, though she doesn't have articulation in her mouth. You can't move the jaw up and down. You can see some visible teeth. One, two, and three. And as you can also see, she's got kind of sneery, would I, sneery eyes. Is that a term? Sneery eyes? She has very much bags under her eyes, both on the tops and the bottoms. Nice warts also done on the tops of her nose as well, on top of the nose. She does have uh, a very flat hairstyle. I mean, it's fairly accurate to the way it looks in the film. It just generally looks like a really squashed. It looks like somebody stepped on a hash brown. But as you can see, it's done in that same gray treatment. Slightly a different gray than her face, but still gray nonetheless. Detailing done also on the hat is a nice touch as well. Uh, a little bit of green, unfortunately, from the band of the hat has carried its way onto the point of the hat. But overall, again, nice texturing that Diamond has put into these pieces. Really good. Just, I mean, to look at that, just marvel that some artists would have taken the time and put like little wrinkles on there. It almost kind of has like an elephant hide to it. Uh, as I mentioned, though, the hat isn't removable, so you can't take that off or anything like that. She's a very spindly-looking character, very narrow. Again, what's with these narrow waistlines? I was just talking about that with Jack Skellington, and yet she also has the same thing happening. I don't even—I wouldn't even want to guess what size dress that would be. I guess it would be varying from the top to the bottom. It has stripes in her sleeves, very narrow fingers, as I mentioned already. But as you can see, each of the individual fingernails done in a darker gray. That's a nice touch as well. Articulation on Helgamine, her head rotates. Well, it, let me see if I can get in there. Her head rotates back and forth. But because her hair is a flat piece, it does limit a little bit what you can actually do. The arms hinge out a little bit, in and out, and you can rotate them back and forth. She does have rotation in her hands. She has rotation not in one point, but two points right at the top. Right there, and then right here in her lower area. I guess right around her thigh or waist section, right here. She has waist articulation. And like I said, she doesn't have anything on the underside. There's no feet. There's no legs. There's nothing that you really have to struggle and move and kind of align so that she stands perfectly fine. Because both the characters have literally no feet, nothing to stand them up other than their cloak. Would you call it a cloak? Vampire cloak. And for the skirt, both the vampire, the small vampire, and Helgamine stand perfectly fine. Suppose I might be a little disappointed that I couldn't make any progress putting together the guillotine diorama, but when it's all said and done, the whole point of putting together a puzzle is there's a fair bit of journey that's involved. You don't want to come into the room and somebody's already put all the pieces together except for those crucial pieces to finish off the puzzle. You put them in and then shout, hooray, I put the puzzle together. You didn't do anything. You just finished somebody else's work. So this now has led me to a quest that I can start to finish off the diorama of the guillotine because it does look pretty good, at least in the images. 
Of course, what I've got to work with right now is squat. But like I said, I'm determined between this wave and the next wave to put everything together and finally have a fully visible, fully displayable looking guillotine, which I think is going to look really nice. As for the figures themselves, the small vampire and Helgamine, you sort of get one from both. You get one vampire, you get one witch. That's going to be, of course, accompanied by more vampires and more witches. Oh my. So we're going to be having a look at a couple more as well. Um, it's nice that they actually put one of each in this set. So you sort of get a sample. It's like going to Costco and you're going around to different sample booths. Ooh, this one has bruschetta. Ooh, this one has soda. So you can, like I said, you can get a little bit of everything. Both the figures are presented quite nicely. Vampire has some nice colors to him, more, more so to his face and his hands. The rest of him is all black. But even like the texturing that I mentioned in his cloak has really fine little minute details that, again, you don't really see it until you look up close. Helgamine has a lot more going for her, I suppose. She does have very long hair that does limit a little bit what you can actually do when it comes to rotating of her head. She has a nice expression on her face. And actually, both the figures have good expressions on their face. And unlike Burnt Santa Jack, uh, they actually do have an accessory. Each of them have their own thing, a parasol or umbrella for the mini vampire, small vampire. They don't like to be called mini vampires. And the, of course, the broom that comes included with Helgamine. A nice overall decent looking set. This set should be available right now, as well as the burnt Santa Jack that we already had a look at. A big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select that provided the sample that we're having a look at in this review. If you picked up this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section, or based on this review, what do you guys think of the small vampire, not, don't call them mini vampire, they don't like to be called mini vampires, small vampire and Helgamine. I'd like to hear your, read your comments down below. You can't really hear comments unless somebody was able to put it to audio. I don't think they can do that right now. Give it about five years, you'll be able to have audio comments. Could you imagine how trolls would be having just a field day with audio trolling comments? I don't even want to think that that's a possibility. But let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of these figures. If you're new to the channel and liking the content that you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting the subscribe button down below. Consider the idea of turning the bell notification on and keeping those peepers of yours peeled because there's going to be definitely more videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.